the best hummingbird plant is salvia black and blue. And I'm surrounded by the salvia black and blue here. It usually starts blooming end of July and it will bloom all the way till frost. This plant is covered with hummingbirds. In fact, hopefully we'll see a couple because the hummingbirds are like my pets. I can put a chair here and sit and the hummingbirds love this plant. Now hummingbirds also like, you know, the butterfly bush, but by 10 to one, the hummingbirds like salvia black and blue. When I went backpacking up in the Andes, this is a native plant that grew in Argentina. Uh, in fact, some of the plants have come from Buenos Aires, some of the new plants that they found. So it's native to a warmer tropical climate. Uh, they will grow in California, Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina, along the East Coast where it doesn't get so cold. But I live in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. My name is Mark Viette. And we get cold. You know, we can get well below zero degrees. So in our garden, they normally would freeze. So what I do is I take one or two bags of mulch and I pour it over the plant during the winter months. Or I take a heavy cloth and lay it over the plant. And they come back every year. Now, if you live in Virginia Beach or Rehoboth Beach or Long Island, this is a plant that will come back year after year after year. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I have some in containers. And what I do with the containers, I'll bring them indoors during the winter months to a place that does not freeze. And I don't overwater them. But one of the important things is when you're taking some of your tropical plants indoors for the winter months, you do not want to overwater them. Now, this plant produces, it was kind of unique. I didn't know this at first. But they produce this growth underground. I'm assuming this is a root, but if you look at some of these here, as they get older, here, they produce this swollen root, and sometimes they make new plants from this. So, you know, this was under the ground, and you can transplant them. Now, if you're going to transplant them or divide them. You do that in the spring. You don't do that during the late season. And so, if you're going to transplant them, like I do, sometimes I dig a piece of a plant for some of my friends, you come in. And then you're going to plant this. Now, in those colder climates where you get freezing temperatures, I plant probably six inches deep. That will help protect them. But you can see all the new shoots that are coming out, which will grow either this year or next spring. Now, this is one plant, and this plant is almost four feet in diameter, so you don't plant them uh, too close. They really love full sun. And they can handle dry conditions. They don't like heavy shade. So if you're going to plant them in a the shade, you want to plant them in morning sun or filtered sun, but as much afternoon sun as you can get. My recommendation is every person who has a little outdoor patio or a place that you sit, you really need to have salvia, black and blue in that area, so you can enjoy the hummingbirds from July, August, September, October, maybe even into November. Again, salvia black and blue is probably my number one favorite plant for our gardens. A great thing about this plant is it's also deer resistant. I have it out in the garden in other areas where the deer, they come and feed on the daily flowers, but they do not touch this salvia. I didn't mention earlier, but it's a great pollinator plant. You know, over here we have a bumblebee, 
Then we have honeybees. So honeybees love this plant. Bumblebees love this plant. So it's a great pollinator plant that you can add to your garden. Bumblebee or honeybee? Honeybee, good. Oh, there's the hummingbird, right there. It'll come up. There it is. <laughs>